Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have a fun little project share for Easter or spring crafts. And um, I wanted to show you what I made, all the products that I used, and at the end we'll have a craft with me so I could show you exactly how to make them. They're super simple and fun to make and very inexpensive. Uh, before I start, I wanted to uh, give credit to the person who I got the idea from. There's a video from Colorful Craft Corner, which I will link down below, and uh, she demoed this uh, technique. Actually, there's some other videos online as well, but this is the one that I watched and the one that I learned from. And I just adapted it a little bit to use what I have and to use Dollar Tree products. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly what I made. So I made these fabric, co fabric covered eggs and they are foam eggs that I just covered with different fabrics that I had in my stash, regular cotton fabrics and some trims as well. And you can use these as uh, decorations in your house. Um, that's what I plan to do. You can make like different coordinating ones and put them in a little bowl like this. Uh, just, you know, whatever kind of theme that you'd like, whatever fabrics and trims that you have. So the ones that I made um, were inspired by this little fabric that I have. I've had this one in my stash for a long time and here's a scrap of it. Let me just move that one. It's from 2017 and it's from Penny Rose Fabrics. So in case you're looking, it's called Bunnies and Cream. I'm sure you could still probably find it somewhere, maybe on Etsy or something. But um, anyway, so I use the bunny scene in a few of the different panels of the eggs like that one. And then on the other panels, I just use some cream homespun fabrics on this egg. And then once the fabrics were on, I trimmed it in some trim that I got in a bundle from Hobby Lobby. So that's that one. The next one is very similar, except instead of the bunnies fabric, I used this pretty little country floral pattern. And I used a uh, plaid homespun fabric on the other sides. And then I used this, this metallic, um, well, a metallic trim on a tan rickrack, if you could see that. And then on the top, I just added a little pin with a sequin just to add a little bit of bling to that. And then this one I did a little bit differently. Instead of doing long segments for the different fabrics, I just um, did them horizontally like this. So you have the bunny fabric here and here, and then the opposite corners are that, that um, country that country floral. And then I added some rickrack, some tan rickrack, and I glued on some buttons with some pearl cotton on the uh, on the seams. So just to add a little bit of, of interest. So those are the three that I made. And they're so easy to make you guys. Um, a great project to use, like I said, Dollar Tree eggs and Dollar Tree sells fat quarters of fabric. So if you've been picking those up and not sure what to do with them, and if you've been picking up Rick Rack or other trim, this is a perfect project for you. So let's get started and I will show you what I used. Uh, first, you're gonna need some craft eggs. And this is a pack from the Dollar Tree. It comes six to a pack. Um, I definitely recommend this kind of foam. If you could see their smooth foam. I had gotten a pack from Hobby Lobby, and sorry for the crinkling, but I tried this one, and this is the Craft Foam brand. And this one, here, let's do a comparison. This kind of foam is very uh, rough and bumpy, as opposed to the Dollar Tree egg, and this is a Dollar Tree egg, and you can see it's much smoother because you're gonna have to score the egg, and if it's smooth foam, it's much easier to score than this bumpy foam. Um, I have an example of one that I did try to make with the Hobby Lobby foam, and I don't like the way it turned out. So this is a Hobby Lobby one, and as you can see through the fabric, there are bumps, and it just doesn't look really nice and, um, I don't know, it doesn't look very smooth. See all the bumps and there are lots of indents. So the Dollar Tree one is just a prettier egg shape in my opinion, and it's a lot easier to work with. And they're a lot cheaper. Uh, the Hobby Lobby pack of four was I think $5, and you can get a six pack from Dollar Tree for $1.25. So 
The only thing is sometimes, well, for me, I had a hard time finding these, but hopefully you won't have a hard time and they'll just be in your Easter craft section at Dollar Tree. So those are the eggs that you wanna start with. They do make them smaller. Um, I haven't tried with smaller eggs, but I think this size is good. It might be a little unwieldy to use a smaller egg. So just use this size, the one that comes six in a pack. Um, you're gonna need some fabric, of course. You can use whatever fabrics you want. I suggest two different kinds of fabrics per egg. For this one, for our demo, I'm gonna use a piece of plain muslin. This is the, just the cheapo kind you get at any craft store. It's like $4 a yard. And then I'm gonna use this cotton print that I've had in my stash for a long time. I don't even know where it's from. But um, I like to save pieces of fabric like this for projects that come along, and this is just a perfect way to use that. I'm gonna use some rickrack. I picked out this one for this project, just plain tan rickrack. You're gonna need some scissors. I'm gonna use my fabric shears, and you're also gonna need some smaller scissors too. So I just have some embroidery scissors. Use what you have. You, if you don't have a small pair, that's okay. You could just use whatever kind of scissors you have, but it just makes it easier if you have a smaller pair. Uh, you're gonna need a marker or a pen of some sort. And then you're gonna need a craft knife. So of course, this kind of project, you have to be careful with if you're using a craft knife. I have an X-Acto one, but you can get knives the style from the Dollar Tree. Um, they're very sharp, so don't have kids do this. And when you're doing it, please just be careful, okay? I haven't cut myself, and um, you know, I, as long as you're careful, you'll be fine. And you're gonna need a couple of rubber bands as well. So I just have two like this, and these are gonna guide you to making lines on your eggs. All right, and then any embellishments that we need afterwards, we'll talk about later. All right, so, oh, and also you're gonna need some Fabri-Tac. fabri, -Tac. fabri -Tac is glue that works well on fabric uh, products. So whatever you like to use to glue fabric on, I like to use fabri -Tac. so I'm gonna use that. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, you're gonna take your egg. And this egg is about, um, let me just measure it quick off to the side here on my grid. It's about three inches tall, a little bit less than that by um, mm, one and three quarter inches wide, okay? So we are gonna divide this up into quadrants. And I'm gonna do this one in four different long sections, just like this egg. So you're gonna take a rubber band and just, this is just gonna be a guideline to draw, draw a line. So just take one and put it going from top to bottom on your egg, as straight as you can. You could snap it into place and that kind of straightens it out a little bit. All right, so you have a rubber band on there. Take your marker and then just pick one of the sides and just draw a line right on your egg, all the way around. Whoops, like that. It's okay if I messed it up a little, no problem. Okay, then go ahead and take your rubber band off and put it the other way. So about like, you know, per perpendicular to the first line. Like that. It's not straight, as straight as you can, you know, trying to make the quadrants pretty equal. I don't um, get too crazy about it. All right, and then go ahead and draw your line again on this side. Okay, take your rubber band off and you have divided your egg into four sections. Okay. So that's it for the rubber band and marker. So now you're gonna take your craft knife and you are going to go right over those lines, go in about a quarter to a half an inch, go in pretty deep and just saw all the way down. Sawing is the best way I found to get through your, oops, sorry, bumped my tripod, to get through your styrofoam and just go ahead and go around. And I'll probably speed it up here so you don't have to watch me do this, but just be careful. 
If you want to, you could put it down on your craft mat and do it there so it's not in your hand, but I just kind of like to do it in my hand so I can have a feel for how deep it's going in. Okay. So there's one side and then go around the other side. All right, so the whole thing is cut, okay? So remember, you wanna make sure it's about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch in. And then I just usually go around again just to make sure every spot is cut. It's not hard to do at all. I mean, it's a exacto knife on styrofoam, you know? But if you're doing this with that, that rougher styrofoam, it doesn't make a nice straight line. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't like that at all. Definitely use the, the smooth foam. And I didn't see, they had smooth foam at Hobby Lobby in different shapes, but I didn't see it in the eggs. So that's why I uh, had gotten the other kind. All right, so there you go. So I'm gonna put that back on there for now. We're gonna use this again. But now let's move on to the fabric. Now the fabric you're going to cut into a rough size that will cover one of the quadrants, okay? That's gonna be approximately four and a half by three and a half. I measured one out before just to, just to be able to tell you. But um, I just kind of eyeball it usually. Okay, and I'm just gonna take my fabric light over just to kind of guesstimate how much I need. I, I like to use a little bit more than is necessary. But uh, so you just want to make sure it's going to cover one of the quadrants, okay? So just put it on top of one side of your egg and then go back with your X-Acto knife. And what you're going to do is push the fabric into those indentations, okay? So I like to start in the middle, and you see my line is right there. Oops, sorry. And then I'm gonna start and push it in like that. And this is very forgiving because if it doesn't work the way you want, you could always take it out and start again. But I like to start in the middle of the egg and then go over to the other side of that quadrant and push it in there. And then just kind of keep working around or working down till you get to one end. And kind of stretch it into place so it doesn't have like that many um, like folds or anything. So I'm just kind of pushing it into place like that. And then this is kind of just like a rough start, but um, I'm gonna do it to the other side as well. And don't, this does not cut your fabric. It just gets it right into, the, uh, into that dent or indentation that we cut before. So just keep going around. Take your time. All right, this one doesn't want to stay. That's okay, this is just a rough start. Okay, so there, that's what it looks like to begin with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and trim off the excess. So just kind of put it against the egg and cut off the excess fabric, cutting pretty close to where you pushed it in, like that. Okay, let me move those bits over. So now it looks like this. So now you're gonna go ahead and keep pushing in since the first pass was just a rough pass. This is just to really get it in there. At the top, go like that. And then once you figure that you're pretty much got most of it pressed in, we're gonna trim it a little bit more with the smaller scissors. This is just the way that seems to work for me.
I just keep going around. See, like that end is a little bit too much. So I take my smaller scissors and trim that off. Just as close to the egg as you can. And uh, I tend to make a mess and get little pieces of fabric everywhere. <laughs> okay. And then for the fine tuning, get all the edges into that gap like that. And if you have a part here that's folded, you could just kind of push it down into the gap like that as much over as you can. I mean, you can cover that up with some trim if it bothers you. But as long as you stretch it across the surface of the egg, it's pretty much unnoticeable. And if there's a little bit of a fold, that's okay, it's fabric. But I find the thinner the fabric you use, the easier it is to get no folds in it. Um, I wouldn't use like felt or anything on these. I think that would be too heavy and it wouldn't lay right across the egg. Okay, so the end you wanna poke in and there. So there, we have one side done. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the opposite side with the same fabric. So I'm just gonna take it and lie it over again. Now, if you're using a directional fabric or maybe a fabric that has a pattern on it that you want to show, like I did with the bunnies here, just make sure you cut it and press it onto your egg so that that part's showing. Just be aware of that. But if it's something like this, a small all over print, then don't even worry about it. Just, oops, sorry, almost dropped it. Just hold it wherever. All right, sorry, I bumped my tripod. So I will start doing this and I won't make you sit through the whole thing since we did it before, but maybe just to go over it quickly again, hold it over the quadrant that you're going to cover, okay? Then start in the middle with your X-Acto knife and just get to where your gap was. Just start going down, go across to the other side and press down there too, pulling it taut as you're going with your knife. Just roughly at first like that. Oops. And then go over to the other side and do the same thing. All right, so we have the rough shape done. Take your scissors, hold it against the egg, trim off the excess. Just roughly like that. You could probably do it, like make a pattern and then just cut it out a little bit more precisely so you're not wasting the, the fabric like I was. But um, I just kind of like to wing it. All right, so I'm pressing it in. This is more fine tuning. Get my small scissors. Cut really close to the egg this time. Okay, so it looks like this. Go ahead and take your knife and press all of the excess fabric into that seam. All right, so we have both sides of the floral side done or both sides of the floral pattern done. Pretty much. Now I'm gonna take the muslin, which I like because it's just like a plain kind of a, you know, homey looking fabric. I use this for quilt um, backing sometimes if they're just gonna hang on the wall. So let's cut off a piece of this. And the same procedure, just 
hold it up top to the side that you want to cover. Take your knife and start pushing it in. Okay, I've got the one side of the muslin done, as you can see. So we just have one more section to do. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so our egg is all covered up. As you can see, all of the fabrics are pushed down into the seams and it has kind of a unfinished appearance. So we are gonna cover up these seams with some trim. Uh, Rick Rack is great for trim like this um, because it bends easily. You wanna use something that can, can curve around a surface <clears throat> without sticking up too much, like a regular grain ribbon probably wouldn't work for this just because it would look a little bit too stiff. You need something that's very nice and fluid. So gro or Rick Rack is great. Um, a trim like this is really good that can bend easily. And yeah, the other ones are Rick Rack too. So Rick Rack or trims that can bend e easily. So what I usually do is I take my piece of trim, just you know, a big long piece. I don't really measure it beforehand. And I start gluing and I put Fabri-Tac on a section that's probably a little bit bigger than um, going down one side of the egg. So I like to start down here at the bottom and just put it in the middle and just go up one side over one of the gaps and just make sure you cover the gap part as you're going around. And then just press it down lightly as you go. And then I'm gonna figure out where it will meet the, the original side and I'm gonna cut it off there or the original end. And then put glue on the rest because I didn't get the whole thing glued. and finish gluing it and connect to the where you start. So it looks like that. And then take some more Rec Rack and do the same thing. Fuzzy there on the other side. So I'm going to glue. Now that I have a little bend here, so I'm just gonna cut that off. Okay, let's glue about a egg size piece. Start again at the bottom of the egg. Oops. If you get glue all over you, it'll stick everywhere. <laughs> okay, and then just like the first time, just press it down lightly as you go. Go right around the top. Figure out the piece you need and cut it off. And finish gluing. This is the only adhesive you use in the whole project. Everything else just stays in place just from tucking it in. So I think that's pretty cool. There. All right, make sure you cover that seam. You could scooch it over before it dries. All right, and that just gives it such a nice finished look. Right, isn't that cute? And it matches the other ones. And you could go ahead and add some embellishments too, which let's do that. Since they're foam, you can poke pins in here. Um, and pins are a great way to hold sequins into place. I happen to have this big thing of sequins and as long as they have a hole in them, they're really easy to add to your projects. I don't remember where I got this from. Could be from Buttons Galore, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, take like a, a larger sequin that you have that coordinates and then just take a, a pin and I think I'll use a white one like I used in the other one just so they um, coordinate. Okay, then take your pin and stick it 
through the sequin. Sorry, I have glue on my fingers. And like this one, I just added it through the top. So I'm going to do that here too, just so they coordinate. And just press it in. And there you have a nice little embellishment. You could add those all around. This one, like I said, I had hot glued on some buttons, but I did th thread them first with some pearl cotton just to give it a more homespun look. So, you know, you can go ahead and embellish these any way you want. If you wanted to add, like, um, if you have some fabric flowers or paper flowers, that would be nice. I think I might have to add a little bit more glue to that one, but you get the idea. So yeah, aren't those adorable? If you have any questions, please let me know. I would love to hear them and I would love to help if I can. Uh, like I said, this is a really inexpensive project using the Dollar Tree eggs. You can use Dollar Tree fabric and trims and just a few other supplies that you probably have in your stash like pins or scissors or glue. You can make these cute little decorations and add them to your decor or, um, you know, just a, a fun little you know these would look so cute in a little Easter basket like Target has those ceramic Easter baskets and you could put those in there or even like a little egg tray that would look really sweet in your um, in your house so that is my project for today I hope you liked it I will link a colorful craft corner down below with the original video for how I got inspired to do this so I will talk to you soon thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon with another crafty video take care guys bye Bye.